why this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. This is really the second part of uh, the previous video I uploaded. And here's the preparation of uh, getting new sod and uh, re, re grading your yard so it slopes the right direction. So we've already hit this three times with some Roundup. And you can see it's nice and brown, which means it's not going to grow anymore. So there was a lot of weeds and who knows what kind of grass is mixed in here, but it's all dead now. So what I'm going to do is rototill it. And I'm going to move the uh, high side, which is the furthest away from us. I'm going to move all that dirt up here to the area where the uh, water was accumulating because it wasn't sloped properly to begin with. So we're going to change the whole grade. And then once I get that just right, then I'm going to add about two inches of nice topsoil over the whole thing. And then it's ready for sod. So I put some stakes where the sprinklers were when I was rototilling so I wouldn't smash in, you know, rototill over the old heads. Now on this side over here, it was quite high. You know, compared, so we wanted to take it all down and move all this dirt to the uh, other end. And we bring that end up, uh, it lowers this side. Now here's the topsoil that's going to be going in. It's a nice little blend. And it has a nice little smell to it. And that's how you know it's really good. And you can feel the heat coming off of it. And that's how you know it's good. A little, little heat rises off of this stuff because it's producing. Now I got a nice long rake here, which I'm going to be grading it with to get this nice and flat. Matter of fact, we did compact all this area before we put this topsoil on here, just so, so there wouldn't be any settlement once the water hits it and the lawn starts growing, which can happen a lot when you're doing a lot of dirt work. You can get some irregular settlement if you don't, uh, you know, get it compacted right. Well, that's about um, three and a half yards of topsoil we brought in. And now we're going to adjust these sprinklers. That one broke from the wheelbarrow going over it, so we had to repair that one. Once we get this um, dialed in, this dirt, we'll uh, run the sprinklers and we'll flood all this again. And then let it let, uh, settle overnight. And then we'll uh, touch it up, see where it settled, and regrade, and then lay sod. A lot of process and a lot of steps you know you could probably skip them but you know you may run into problems later on if you do so you can see that uh, we've got it nice and saturated here and this from the settlement We've just got the sod dropped off here. And what we're using, because there's a lot of shaded area in this, so we went with uh, Marathon 1, which is uh, from Southland Sod Farm, Oxnard. So it's a real popular, nice sod, real dark green. It grows well um, in, uh, in shade. Uh, it needs about 60% daylight to grow, I believe it is. But uh, out of all the sods, the one, two, and three, the one is the hardiest of the bunch. So it's good for foot traffic, dogs, you know, and animals. It recovers really quickly, in other words. So here's another thing a tr good um, broken-in trowel comes in handy for. The trowel that I happen to be using, I've had for uh, quite a few years, so it's razor sharp it's really nice for um, cutting the sod you know there's plastic running through the sod and uh, can be hard to cut sometimes but with a nice sharp trowel cuts it really easily also a nice this trowel I can actually fine-tune the grade as I go back so it's similar to laying tile I'm using my trowel to uh, lay this dirt down real smooth before I drop the sod on it and as you can see there Now the way you start on this sod, at least I do, it's not uh, mandatory, but 
I like to stagger my joints on the sod so they're not all in one line. So what I do is I use a half of a section of sod to start and then every time you get you alternate so all of your seams don't line up with each other. When you get the sod delivered, you have to get it uh, on the ground and watered the same day. And, uh, we've, we've, we took about two hours from delivery to in installation. And then we get the water on it. So this went down real nice. Also, I use that trowel to hit the sod um, to bang it in tight every, every, every section I lay down. You have to cut a little sod out every time you get to a sprinkler head and make sure it's clear. Because once you start watering heavily um, for the first week, you can't walk out there. You're going to leave, uh, you know, your foot's going to sink into the mud because it is pretty wet for the first week. So you don't want to have to get back out there to adjust the sprinkler head, in other words. So we started on the one at far edge and we stayed pretty straight. Which you see that line there? Pretty straight considering it's just sod. And uh, we get all the way to the other end and we still got a nice straight line when we hit this curb. So that's a good sign. That it was consistently tight all the way through. So my cut at the end was about uh, four, four inches all the way down. I could have pulled that full piece to the edge and put the four inch in the middle, but it's going to grow either way. But that's an option. Well, it looks like maybe it was six inch because that curb is about four. So about a six inch strip there. Once you get all your sod in, you'll want to water three times a day, uh, five minutes, three times a day for the first week. Then you can reduce it down. I reduce it kind of slowly down. I go from um, the first week, I go three times a day, and then I reduce it down slowly but surely. Now we have to adjust the sprinkler nozzles. The ones I'm using are 0 to 360 degrees. So that means I can fit any angle, any spray range that I want. And I don't have to worry about quarters, 90s, and you know, things like that. I just, in half sprays, I just get all 0 to 360s and fine tune them. getting some good coverage we almost got a hundred percent overlap on these spray heads Now eventually that once the sod um, grows together all those little um, seams where it comes together those are all disappear after the first cut and the first cut uh, you have to make sure the lawn is uh, very long longer than you would normally keep it because what you want to do is make sure that the roots are, are grown into the ground real well because if you cut it early it'll, it'll tear the roots up from the ground and you can disturb the growth of the lawn. Anyway, this is a week later here. And you can see we got the hand railing on the steps. The color of the concrete's a lot different now. 
Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Have a nice day. If you like it, subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to get the latest and greatest updates as I roll them out.